Fed chair uh, the, that he believed there will be three interest rate cuts this year. And the dot plot reflects that uh, the, by the end of this year, the federal refund, uh, federal fund uh, rate will fall to uh, between 4.5% to 4.75% from 5.25 to 5.5% currently. Okay, in terms of all looking inflation data, the US core PCE, personal consumption expenditures price index uh, rose 2.8% uh, year over year in March in line with market expectations and further approaching the US inflation target of 2%. So this is the, uh, the inflation gauge that is more, uh, that the Fed is watching more closely. So CPI, uh, I mean, uh, March US CPI is higher than expected. Uh, yet we, uh, we will see la, if the PCE index, especially the core PCE index, which is closely monitored by, monitored by uh, the Fed, uh, we also see a, uh, a rising trend. If not, then I think uh, the, U, the Fed will uh, start uh, uh, reducing, in, lowering interest rate as expected in June. Okay, we still hold the view that uh, the Fed will start uh, uh, cutting interest rates in June. Um, the ISM manufacturing PMI uh, rose to 50.3 in March, also returning to expansion territory. Uh, the U.S. jobs, uh, job openings, uh, this survey showed that job openings increased slightly to 8.76 million in February, slightly more than expected, indicating strong labor demand. But if we compare to the historical high uh, last year, I think uh, back in September, the job openings was uh, the highest level of job openings in the U.S. was around 11 million. Uh, uh, so uh, that reflects that it's uh, very difficult for companies, U.S. employers to uh, get employees. Uh, so there's uh, upward pressure on uh, on uh, wage, uh, uh, wage uh, inflation. But now these uh, job openings have uh, 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 dropped to below 9 million. Okay. And uh, uh, as shown in the non-farm payroll data uh, announced last Friday. There are more people joining the labor force. Uh, the participation rate has gone up by 0.2%. So it means more and more uh, 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 US citizens are uh, uh, starting to look for jobs again. So this would help um, uh, lower or further uh, reduce job openings and uh, alleviate the uh, upward pressure on wage. Okay. Um, currently, 51% of people in the market expect that interest rate will be cut in June, while 47.9% of people expect that interest rate will remain unchanged in June. But uh, this is a bit outdated. Huh? I, I would uh, wish to uh, highlight uh, because after the release of the CPI, now uh, only uh, less than 20% uh, uh, chance of a rate cut in June, but uh, this is reflected by the uh, CMD uh, uh, Fed Watch, uh, which is quite volatile. It can fluctuate uh, very drastically uh, before and after the release of uh, relevant uh, economic data. So uh, let's see, uh, uh, especially the March PCE uh, index. If it continue to uh, soften moderate, then I think this uh, chance of uh, June cut will increase again. Okay, so now come to the uh, Hong Kong stock market uh, index targets, our index target for Hang Seng. Near-term support is uh, expected at around 16,500, which is the 100-day uh, moving average. Uh, this black line represents the 100-day moving average. The Hang Seng index for the last one two months, uh, nearly two months, uh, move above and below, uh, ups and down, below trade, ups and uh, above and uh, uh, below the 100-day moving average. Uh, next support would be 16,000 here. Uh, key support is 15,400 uh, here. That is uh, uh, close to the February low. 
Okay, near term resistance uh expected at seventeen thousand five hundred. Uh, the so far this year, uh, the highest level of for Hang Seng was seventeen thousand two hundred fifteen, seen in uh mid March. So we expect near term uh resistance around seventeen thousand five hundred. Next resistance will be the two hundred fifty day moving average. This red line. Okay, uh, currently lies around 17,900. And uh, uh, the key resistance level uh, higher up will be around 18,400, slightly higher than uh, 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 the uh, October high in 2023. Okay. Um, let's talk about sectors we have a bearish view. So try to avoid those sectors. Uh, um, uh, as the effects of China's interest rate and RR cut begin to show, coupled with a series of stimulative measures, we believe the market confidence is strengthening and the inflow of cap foreign capital into uh, the Chinese and Hong Kong stock markets also confirmed this. So this is a, 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 re a reiteration of what I have uh, shared with you earlier. However, we expect that some sectors, uh, uh, we don't think we'll see a across the board kind of uh, recovery uh, in the Hong Kong market. There's still some sectors that will perform, that will underperform, they will lag behind, including those related to Hong Kong's local economy and those vulnerable to US sanctions. So we uh, pinpoint two uh, areas that are most vulnerable. Uh, one, uh, those are exposed to Hong Kong local economy. The other uh, vulnerable uh, area it, are those companies that are them uh, are vulnerable to US uh, sanctions. Okay. Um, sectors related to Hong Kong's local economy include Hong Kong real estate. Uh, you may ask me later, I'm not sure. Uh, last uh, In my past webinars, uh, Singapore investors may uh, tend to ask uh, me uh, about the view on Hong Kong land. Huh? Uh, so uh, Hong Kong land is also among the bearish uh, sector because of uh, now the uh, 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 vacancy rate of grade one, grade A uh, office uh, property in Hong Kong has risen to a record high, you know, 16%. I don't know what is the uh, uh, vacancy rate uh, of grade A office uh, premises in Singapore. I think that should be uh, less than 10%, I guess. Uh, uh, you may tell me if you know the fake the number. Uh, Hong Kong now is 16%. Uh, so that also uh, uh, pressurized uh, rental. So rental is coming down. Uh, 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 vacancy rate will, it will may continue to rise to close to uh, uh, close to 20% as the trend of work from home and also uh, more uh, International multinational companies are moving the headquarters uh, from Hong Kong to elsewhere to Singapore and other uh, countries, and also uh, companies are downsizing. These are all uh, negative to uh, the, uh, the investment property sector. Okay, uh, and U.S. interest rate cuts uh, have been repeatedly postponed, so uh, in U.S. interest rate higher for longer. Uh, will also uh, increase Hong Kong's borrowing costs. Uh, because Hong Kong dollar is packed to the US dollar, our interest rate have to follow uh, uh, those in the US. So uh, although Hong Kong, uh, the Hong Kong government uh, has uh, cancelled in its late, latest um, policy uh, uh, address uh, the additional stamp duty, buyer stamp duty, and at valorium, at valorium stamp duty. Three uh, stamp duties are all uh, scrapped uh, on new residents uh, will help stimulate property market transactions and lower the threshold for home purchase. Uh, it's reported that in March, uh, Hong Kong property transactions saw a, a, a many year high. Uh, it increased to more than 4,000 uh, transactions of property transaction after the uh, scrapping of the uh, stamp, special stamp duties. But it is worried that it's fear that this may be a short-term impact on the property market. The pent-up demand uh, will be satisfied. And after 
uh, uh, this pent up demand uh, has uh, I mean uh, the home buyers have uh, bought their uh, the property then subsequently the demand uh, may weaken we, we may not see a sustainable kind of uh, uh, transaction property transaction uh, for the rest of the year okay um Hong Kong because Hong Kong's housing supply will be quite abundant in the next few years uh every year uh, there are talks of uh new supply of um more of around 50,000 units whereby the uh, take up rate uh, per year is less than 20,000 so this oversupply, uh, housing oversupply in Hong Kong is quite serious and we expect it to continue uh, despite the scrapping of the special, uh, those special stamp duties to, uh, to encourage uh, uh, home purchase. Okay, a uh, couple of the impact of the immigration wave. So uh, more people are leaving Hong Kong, but on the other side, the Hong Kong government uh, uh, also endeavors to attract uh, 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 expert, ex, uh, attract uh, employees from mainland China to come to, to work in Hong Kong. And uh, it's reported that so far they have received 70,000 uh, applications uh, to for uh, getting work in Hong Kong. Uh, but uh, it's reported that about more than 200,000 Hong Kongers have migrated. So Hong Kong lost a group of potential buyers with the ability to purchase properties. It will put certain pressure on the real estate industry and affect the, uh, those property companies' dividend payment, putting downward prices. Uh, among the four major property developers uh, in Hong Kong, uh, Cheong Kong, uh, San Hong Kai, uh, Henderson Land, and New World, uh, Cheong Kong is the one with the lowest uh, gearing, uh, debt to uh, equity ratio. Uh, whereas the 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 re other three, they are their debt to equity ratio are quite high, uh, especially New World. Uh, so uh, there are concerns that these um, property developers may uh, fall victim to the uh, the uh, high interest rate. Uh, regime huh, that they have to uh, bear uh, higher finance costs uh, going forward. Okay, uh, the other sector, local uh, Hong Kong local sector that uh, may uh, we expect to underperform is the retail and catering industry. Since the Hong Kong dollar is pegged to the US dollar, it is also affected by repeated delays in US interest rate cuts. Uh, the yen and renminbi fell under strong uh, US dollar. So on the currency side, Hong Kong people now, uh, I think you may have uh, read uh, the report about uh, every weekend, a lot of Hong Kongers uh, go to Greater Bay, uh, go to Sunshan uh, to uh, 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 buy uh, to, uh, for spending and uh, dining. Uh, First of all, is Hong Kong is too expensive. I think you may uh, those who have visited Hong Kong have the same may have the same uh, uh, feeling that now Hong Kong is uh, uh, is very expensive, um, even more expensive than Singapore. Okay, uh, and then uh, the uh, strong, relatively strong Hong Kong dollar because it's packed to the U.S. Uh, also uh, is uh, unfavorable to uh, Hong Kong. Uh, retail, the Hong Kong retail industry, because uh, for Hong Kongers, if they go elsewhere, China, Japan, uh, Thailand, uh, they they uh, they have bigger uh, spending power because of the strengthening Hong Kong dollar. Okay, uh, so this uh, simulate Hong Kong people to travel uh, over uh, abroad and uh, put pressure on Hong Kong's retail and catering industries, and those uh, Chinese. Uh, tourists uh, uh, from mainland China, mainland tourists, the spending power is also uh, not as strong as it was in the past. Okay, so it was observed in a lot of the luxury brand uh, brands that the sales uh, uh, are not as good as uh, before 2019, before the COVID-19 epidemic, because uh, now spending power 
uh, among uh, mainland tourists also weakens. Okay. Um, sectors that are vulnerable to US sanctions are also bearish, such as Chinese computers, chips, biotechnology, artificial intelligence, etc. In recent years, the US has introduced various bills and administrative uh, orders to suppress the development of high tech in China, especially for companies that are highly related to the US market and have a large proportion of business in the US. Their stock prices are easily affected by relevant news and fall sharply. Therefore, we we'll believe that the risks are too high and are not suitable uh, or not justified uh, in terms of uh, risk and rate, risk and return. Uh, from the recent return uh, 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 prospect uh, a perspective is not justifiable uh, for taking the risk, uh, such as Chinese computer Nanovo 992, uh, sticker 992 Hong Kong, and Chinese biotechs that are easily affected by the US, like Wuxi Biologics. Uh, series, the group of companies under Wuxi Biologics 2126, 2359, 2268, and 2269. Okay. Uh, as for chips and AI, the US mainly restricts the flow of the most high rent Western technologies uh, uh, and chips into uh, China. They restrict, uh, they pose in restriction on um, the export of both um, hardware and software for, for producing uh, advanced chips uh, into China. So this will restrict, uh, hinder the development of related companies. As the technological gap between China and the US widens, it's difficult to attract funds to invest in the stocks of uh, those related companies. So chip companies such as uh, SMIC, uh, Ticker uh, 981 Hong Kong, uh, will also uh, be vulnerable uh, to U.S. sanctions. Okay, um, We are bullish on sectors with heavy domestic demand and consumption attributes. As China's economy gradually improves and the Chinese government launches a series of policies to stimulate the market, market confidence is strengthened, which is expected to improve China's consumer sentiment. Moreover, sectors with heavy domestic demand and consumption attributes are often companies that are difficult to suppress to be suppressed by uh, U.S. sanctions, and the related risks are low. Okay, for example, platform economy, sporting goods, catering, clothing, and tourism industries. Um, uh, one of the uh, uh, one of the tools that have been uh, used to con to spur consumption in China is uh, there are two tools. Uh, one is uh, uh, replacement of older uh, products by new products, yi jiu huan xin, and also uh, xia xiang that is going to the uh, to the rural areas, like uh, home appliance going to the rural areas. Home of a uh, car uh, going to Xi Te Xi Te cars going to the uh, rural areas is to uh, try to uh, open up uh, the uh, spending power in the rural uh, areas in China. Uh, but these two tools have been used so many times, so we doubt the effectiveness of these two tools, uh, especially the car market now is uh, getting more and more competitive. It's overcrowded. So uh, sub subsidies uh, implemented in the past may not work. Uh, and, and also you don't need uh, uh, the government to, to, to I mean, uh, grant subsidies to people buying cars. Uh, the car makers themselves are uh, because uh, 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 cutting prices uh, uh, into a cutthroat price competition themselves. Uh, uh, to fighting for market share. Uh, so it does not need the government to uh, grant subsidies to uh, lure people, to induce people to buy cars. Uh, car makers are already uh, lowering uh, the, the prices of their, uh, their cars. Uh, so now the latest area for uh, uh, stimulus is heavy equipment heavy machines. Uh, so recently you can see that uh, some relevant stocks are uh, Wei Cai Dong Li, uh, Sum Lian, 
1157, uh, they benefit from uh, the latest policy of uh, encouraging the ditching of old uh, heavy equipment, old heavy machines uh, to be replaced by new uh, uh, heavy equipment and heavy machines. So this will help uh, them generate more uh, business and revenue, okay? Um, we are also bullish on utility and telecommunication companies with international operations, rather than focusing on Chinese utility companies. Uh, there's one company called Guangdong Investment 270. Uh, that is the, uh, uh, the key uh, water supply uh, to Hong Kong. We Hong Kong people, because Hong Kong, we do have some reservoirs, but those reservoirs cannot... Uh, uh, support uh, the water consumption of the whole uh, Hong Kong uh, population. So we have to uh, uh, buy water uh, from Guangdong uh, from, uh, through this company called Guangdong Investment, Yue Hai Taozi. Uh, uh, but recently, its share price uh, dropped a lot because it's too focused on China and Hong Kong. Uh, so we favor those uh, with international operations, uh, they they would be more resilient uh, to the uh, to uh, the, the negative to the head to the headwinds uh, in China in Hong Kong. We value that company's business is sufficiently diversified, and whether revenue and dividends are increasing steadily. So, company focus on China's utilities may have been affected by the weak. Chinese economy over the past period and may not be able to maintain a dividend payout ratio amid falling revenue, thus affecting their stock price performance. So even uh, utilities, utilities are always seen to be uh, very resilient, uh, very stable, but China's utilities, they are still exposed to uh, the weak domestic economy and that may uh, weaken their ability uh, to uh, pay dividend to their shareholders because of uh, uh, falling revenue. Okay, On the contrary, public utilities or telecommunication companies with international businesses are more resistant to geopolitical or economic downside risk. The stable dividend payout ratio will also become more attractive during the interest rate cut cycle, uh, causing the company's stock price to rise. Okay. Uh, another sector we are bullish on is gold. Uh, uh, gold is, re is uh, resilient to geopolitical and economic downside risk. Uh, 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 better still is gold always plays a safe haven role. So it benefits from geopolitical uncertainties. Okay, uh, As a non-interest bearing asset goes opportunity cost uh, the opportunity cost of holding gold uh, will decrease during uh, the interest rate uh, cut cycle. So uh, why gold prices uh, uh, rose to record high uh, in the uh, recently is ex uh, partly because of expectation of interest rate cut uh, by the US uh, Federal Reserve. Uh, and the fall of the US dollar will also benefit gold prices. Uh, it is recommended to buy gold ETFs instead of uh, physical gold. In addition to sticking with gold price movements, it can also avoid the operational risks of individual companies. Uh, we prefer gold ETFs to physical gold, to gold futures, and even to uh, gold mining companies. Because individual companies, uh, uh, you are not certain about the operational risk uh, of individual companies. Okay, um, stock picks. Uh, uh, one of the stock picks, because we are bullish on platform economy. So JD.com 9618 uh, is one of our stock picks this time round. It has evolved from a pioneering e-commerce platform into a leading technology and service provider with a supply chain at its core. The company has expanded into sectors including retail, technology, logistics, healthcare, and more aiming to transform traditional business models with cutting-edge digital solutions. 
Okay, um, JD Retail, it is a diversified shopping platform and uh, retail infrastructure service provider. The shopping platform covers categories, including computers, mobile phones, home appliances. In the past, uh, JD uh, Retail focused mainly on the so-called 3C products, uh, uh, com camera, computers, uh, but now it has expand its uh, product offering. Now it is uh, cover category categories, including home appliances, uh, clothing, beauty, fresh food, and even you can buy cars uh, on the online platform. As more than 10 million mi mi minimum stock keeping units, SKUs, uh, of self-operated products and has deployed tens of thousands of offline stores, such as JD Mall and JD Home Appliances stores. So uh, they are adopting a uh, online to offline uh, uh, strategy, and now they are un also uh, transforming and in, in another transition. Uh, in the past, they operate their platform more for third party uh, supplier, third party uh, the manufacturers, but now they uh, focus more on their self operated products. So, for self operated products, uh, they can earn a higher profit margin from self-operated products. He also provides a JD home service connecting millions of stores to provide consumers with real-time retail service in hours or even minutes, okay? So for uh, online shopping, I think the uh, capability to for uh, the fast delivery uh, would also uh, dictate uh, uh, who are the winners. Uh. Um, JD Technology provides digital intelligence solutions to government and enterprise uh, customers using technology such as AI, cloud computing, big data, and the Internet of Things. So now they are not only uh, in the business of in the online uh, shopping business. Uh, uh, this subsidy, this uh, company. Uh, JD Technology is providing digital intelligence solutions to both government and private enterprises. Currently, it serves more than 95% of state-owned enterprises and more than 2,500 large enterprises, 944 financial institutions, and more than 2.5 million small and medium enterprises. In July 2023, the industry-oriented JD Yan Xi large model, uh, Da Mo Xing, uh, was launched with parameters reaching hundreds of billions. It is mainly used in industrial scenarios such as retail, logistics, finance, health, and government affairs to solve existing problems in the industry. So it becomes a solution provider uh, to government as well as uh, private enterprise. Okay. Uh, another subsidiary uh, in the group. It's JD Health, is provider of medical and health products, services and solutions, specialized in uh, medical and health products. The business includes health product marketing and sales, medical and health services, corporate health solutions, and smart medical solutions, etc. Covering the entire medical and health industry chain, the entire medical process, and the entire user life cycle. Okay, uh, For online shopping platforms, I think logistic is a very uh, key uh, component. So uh, one of his uh, subsidiaries, JD Logistics, uh, which is also both JD Health and JD Logistics are uh, separately listed uh, on the Hong Kong market. JD Logistics is a supply chain solution and logistics service provider focusing on six major industries, including fast moving consumer goods, clothing, home appliances, and furniture, 3C, uh, computers, mobile phones, and consumer electronics, automobiles, and fresh food. By providing customers with integrated supply chain solutions and logistics services, the company could help customers improve inventory management, reduce operating costs, and efficiently allocate international internal resources. Okay, so JD Logistics not only I, I think uh, now um, uh, when it first set up, it mainly served the parent.
company that is JD Retail uh, by moving its uh, uh, its goods to uh, consumers. But now I think in the latest uh, financial report, uh, more than sixty percent was up to seventy percent of the revenue of its business came from uh, third party. Uh, not from the JD Group, uh, so uh, it becomes less dependent on the parent company. Okay, uh, JD.com, the holding company, uh, nine six one eight for the uh two o two three full year, it recorded revenue of ten uh one thousand eighty four uh trillion. Uh, so uh a billion, sorry, sorry, billion one thousand eighty four billion. Uh, up 3.7% uh, compared to 2022. Operating profit increased very substantially by 32% to 26 billion. Operating margin, profit margin uh, up 0.5 percentage point compared to 2022 uh, to 2.4%. This is the operating profit margin. Net profit attributable to ordinary shareholders of the company uh, increased by more than 1.3 times, 132.8% to 24.2 billion yuan. And net profit margin uh, uh, was 2.2%, up 1.2 percentage point. Dividend distribution, uh, they have announced distribution of uh, 38 US dollar, uh, uh, 0.38 US dollar per ordinary share for 2023. Based on the current stock price of $102.3, the dividend ratio is 2.9% in 2023. So uh, JD.com, I think, is uh, viewed as a growth company. Okay, uh, For a growth company to be uh, have a dividend ratio, uh, of 2.9%, I think it's decent. Uh, it's, uh, it's a decent dividend uh, ratio. Paybacks, a new share repurchase program whereby the company may repurchase up to 3 billion US dollar worth of shares, including ADS, a American Depository Shares, over the next 36 months, ending in March 2027. So they have announced a new share repurchase program uh, uh, under which they may repurchase up to three billion US dollar worth of shares that will lend support to uh, their share price. Okay, business highlights. JD Retail during the 2023 JD single stay grand promotion, Guang Guan Ri, Shuang Shi Yi, 11th of uh, November every year. Uh, so during uh, last year's single days grand promotion, the company achieved new records in transaction value order volume, and number of users. His JD procurement and sales manager live streaming initiative attracted over 300 million viewers across China. Okay, uh, admittedly, uh, online shopping e-commerce in China is getting uh, more competitive, uh, to, be, uh, to be honest. Okay, you have uh, competition from Alibaba, from Pinduoduo, and the new uh, entrants such as uh, Douyin, uh, TikTok, Kwai uh, Shou, uh, as well as Billy Billy. Uh, yet, uh, we observe that JD Retail uh, is uh, quite resilient, uh, is quite uh, competitive, remains competitive uh, despite uh, mm -hmm. the, the competition in e commerce is getting uh, more intense. Uh, JD Health improved its on-demand retail services. It strengthened omni-channel offerings by launching a number of self-operated communi community pharmacies in Beijing. They experiment uh, in Beijing first. Huh? Uh, the self-operated community pharmacies equipped with 24-hour medicine pickup windows and in-store delivery staff uh, to satisfy uh, urgent need for medicines and pharmace pharmaceutical uh, products uh, uh, 24 hour uh, every day. JD Health is dedicated to providing efficient and convenient on-demand shopping and delivery services to users while completing the community's 15 minute life cycle. 生活圈, uh, 不是 life cycle. 15 minute life cycle may apply only to insects. Uh, it's life circle. Uh, uh, with professional healthcare services. So uh, 
they pledged to deliver uh, the uh, ordered goods to uh, consumers within 15 minutes uh, after uh, uh, the placement, the order placement. JD Logistics provided integrated supply chain solutions for more Chinese brands going overseas and global customers. For example, JD Logistics supported a leading Chinese technology company to carry out effective inventory allocation in Europe and achieve rapid delivery in core European countries and regions. As the domestic uh, e-commerce uh, market is getting more competitive. So a lot of these uh, online uh, 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 shopping platforms are uh, going overseas, such as Timu, uh, uh, Shein, okay? But behind uh, the platform, I mean, beyond the platform, you still need the logistic part, the logistic arm to support there. And it's very costly for them to uh, operate their own uh, logistic uh, setup in overseas markets. So they have to rely on uh, sub, uh, I mean providers such as logistic providers such as uh, JD Logistics or uh, Alibaba's Cai Niao. Okay? Um, although the company faced headwinds, including China's economic downturn, a downgrade of public consumption, and the company publishing 10 billion subsidies, the company's operating profit margin and net profit margin, as I have shown earlier in the uh, table, it uh, improved uh, both uh, operating profit margin and net profit margin actually increased, reflecting the company's governance is good and it can still grow steadily in a difficult environment. As China's economy gradually improves, and the Chinese government launches a series of policies to stimulate the market. Citizens, Chinese citizens, consumer confidence will be uh, will uh, will will strengthen uh, over time, and it is expected to shift from consumption downgrading to consumption upgrading again. Uh, hopefully, citizens are more willing to spend large amounts, which will benefit companies like JD.com that provide higher priced and better quality products and services. Okay. In China's new round of fiscal policies to stimulate the economy, the trade-in of old home appliances for new ones is one of the main pillars. I mentioned just now, uh, these are the... Uh, uh, in Cantonese, there's a saying, uh, that means uh, tricks. Uh, uh, you, are, you are not worried about old tricks. As long as it works, old tricks can still be good tricks. Uh. Uh, so uh, trade-in of old home appliances for new ones uh, will still be one of the main pillars supporting the economy. And uh, these e-commerce platforms will benefit uh, from the uh, the relevant policy. One of JD.com's re retail strengths lies in home appliances and 3C products, and the company may benefit from this. The company's current dividend ratio of 2.9% is higher than its peers or other new economy companies. Coupled with the newly implemented repurchase plan, it can effectively enhance the company's attractiveness to investors. Okay. Okay. The share price, uh, it uh, fair better than if you compare to the Hang Seng Tech Index, uh, which I had shown earlier, the Hang Seng Tech Index bottomed out in early February, but JD.com share price uh, bottomed out uh, in, earlier in January together with the Hang Seng Index. And since uh, bottoming out around $70.50, it has risen uh, to above $100 recently. And we do expect further upside uh, we are uh, setting a target of 120, uh, medium term target of 120 Hong Kong dollars for JD.com. Okay, uh, the other stock pick is PCCW. Uh, you, uh, Singapore investors may be, uh, may not be unfamiliar, uh, may be familiar with uh, PCCW. In the past, it is a uh, Hong Kong telecom. Okay, now it has uh, transformed into a global company headquartered in Hong Kong that holds interest in telecommunications, media, IT solutions, property development, and investment, and other businesses. 
The company holds a majority stake in the Hong Kong Tea Trust and Hong Kong Tea Limited, Hong Kong Telecom Trust and Hong Kong Telecom Limited, Hong Kong's premier telecommunications service provider and a leading operator of fixed line, broadband, mobile communication and media entertainment services. Hong Kong Telecom delivers end-to-end -end integrated solution employing emerging technologies to assist enterprises in transforming the businesses. Hong Kong Telecom has also built a digital ecosystem integrating its loyalty program, e-commerce, travel, insurance, big data analytics, fintech, and health tech services to deepen its relationship with customers. PCCW owns a fully integrated multimedia and entertainment group in Hong Kong. It engaged in the provision of over-the-top OTT video services locally and in other regions, as well as content production, artist management, and the event business. Through Hong Kong Television uh, Entertainment Company Limited, PCCW also operates a domestic free TV service in Hong Kong, one of the three uh, free TV stations in Hong Kong. In addition, PCCW holds a stake in Pacific Century Premium Developments Limited and other overseas investments. Okay. Uh, annual results. Last year, it recorded revenue of 30, uh, uh, 6.3 billion, 36.3 billion Hong Kong dollar, uh, up 2.8% compared to 2022. Uh, EBITDA was uh, 12.8 billion Hong Kong dollar, up 3.6%. EBITDA margin, 35.3%, uh, up one percentage point. Losses attributable to equity holders uh, of the company from continuing operations were narrowed to 471 million Hong Kong dollar, uh, by narrowed by 30.3%. Despite of the losses uh, recorded attributable to equity holder, the company has announced uh, distribution of the dividend uh, of 38.25%. Cents, sorry, this should be the cents, uh, uh, 38.25 cents, not dollar. Uh, otherwise, uh, I must make clear here, this is a typo error. Distribution of 38.25 Hong Kong cents per ordinary share in 2023, based on the current stock price of 3.91 Hong Kong dollar, the dividend ratio is 9.8%, close to 10%. So much higher than uh, bank deposits and uh, US Treasury uh, yields. Uh. Um, let's focus on the media business, uh, uh, which performed well. Its OTT business revenue amounted to twenty two point four five two billion uh, Hong Kong dollar, increasing twenty two percent year on year. Its EBITDA amounted to five hundred ninety two million Hong Kong dollar, increasing two hundred thirty three percent year on year. Free TV and related business revenue amounted to 952 million Hong Kong dollar, increasing 5% year on year. Its EBITDA amounted to 190 million, increasing 96% year on year. View TV, VIU, uh, uh, is, uh, it has a, view, a pay subscription uh, channel. So View TV's pay subscription channel uh, revenue increased by 32% year on year. Pay subscribers reach 13.4 million, increasing 10% year on year. Advertising revenue also went up, increased by 15%. Monthly active users, MAU, reached 62.4 million, continuing to lead global peers in the Southeast Asian market. I'm not sure if uh, you can view uh, View TV's pay uh, programs uh, in Singapore. I presume you can. Uh, uh, maybe you are. Uh, already one of the uh, active users. Okay, uh, for Hong Kong Telecom, as worldwide travel resumed in 2023, Hong Kong Telecom, Hong Kong T, witnessed a significant upswing in demand for its consumer mobile business, especially roaming services. Consumer roaming revenue uh, uh, returned to 95% of pre pandemic levels in the second half of 2023. So it has recovered almost 100% before surpassing them in December. December, they already surpassed 
uh, the pan, uh, pandemic levels, while the number of roamers nearly doubled. This resulted in a significant year-on-year -year rise of 176% in total roaming revenue for 2023. Okay. Uh, 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 as I mentioned earlier, more and more Hong Kong people uh, are traveling uh, to uh, the Greater Bay, to Sunshine, to China, and to uh, uh, Southeast Asian countries, or Japan, Korea. So uh, the demand for uh, roaming uh, uh, service will increase uh, stably uh, in the near future. The number total number of 5G customers reached nearly 1.4 million, increasing 32% year on year. Okay. Uh, the business has grown steadily and the dividend payment has increased steadily in the past six years. The current dividend ratio of 9.8% is actually quite attractive. The business is very diversified. It has the ability to withstand geopolitical and economic downturn risk. We are optimistic about the development of media businesses such as View TV in Hong Kong and Southeast Asian markets. Um, Hong Kong uh, TV sitcoms uh, uh, have been very popular uh, in Southeast Asia, uh, in Singapore, in uh, Malaysia. A lot of my Malaysian friends, uh, they learn Cantonese from uh, the TV sitcoms. Uh. So View TV, I think they, uh, they, uh, the production uh, is also uh, uh, of a high standard. Uh. So it should uh, command uh, interest from Southeast Asian uh, markets. Uh, lastly, benefiting from the popularization of 5G and the surge in demand for outbound travel among Hong Kong citizens, roaming usage has increased, which will continue. Okay, uh, share price outperformed the market. You can see the share price bottom out uh, around 350 uh, in uh, mid-September last year. And since then, it's rebounded, risen to uh, uh, recent high of 4.27 Hong Kong dollars uh, late 2023. But the delay in US uh, rate cut, uh, interest rate cut, uh, has uh, brought about a consolidation, a correction in share price after the rally uh, in the fourth quarter last year. So uh, we think uh, investors who are upbeat on this company can uh, see the uh, opportunity. Uh, the uh, while it's in correction uh, more recently uh, to uh, buy into this uh, company. I think around 385, uh, 385 and the target would be uh, 420, uh, implying a 10% uh, return from uh, the recommended buy price. Okay. Before I end, uh, and before we move on to the fireside chat and uh, q and I would like to uh, introduce this. I think uh, our uh, Philip Singapore clients are not uh, unfamiliar with this uh, app. This, uh, this is the Poems Mobile Tree app, which you may be using already. So you can see uh, in the community, uh, you, if you are already a user, uh, you can join uh, the communi community uh, on the app, and then uh, you can find different uh, chat groups or community groups. Uh, this is one from uh, Singapore focusing on technical analysis. So currently, uh, you can also view the community group, uh, Hong Kong community group offered by uh, Philip Securities Hong Kong. So those are in Chinese. Uh, currently, Hong Kong, um, uh, admittedly, we are more uh, Chinese, uh, I mean, 98% uh, or ninety nine percent of our population read and speak uh, Chinese and Cantonese. So our community group are mainly in Chinese. You can see Yi Chen Chao Ren is a Hong Kong community group uh, focusing on option trading strategies. Okay, uh, Hui Ji Gang A Chan, that is about A A Gu the that. Uh, a a mark a share uh, analysis. Uh, Hui Hang Dai Ni You Shi Jie. It's not about traveling. Ah, uh. uh, it's actually uh the foreign stock trading service or or uh 
uh, market news on uh, uh, US, Japan, uh, foreign market news and analysis. Uh, in uh, You can find those uh, news update and analysis uh, in this community community group. Okay, this one is uh, mine, uh, uh, Zhen Wang Shi Fu. Uh, I will share in this uh, community group uh, my views on the Hong Kong uh, or China market. Uh, sometimes I even, I will also talk about uh, macro econ economic trends, uh, US, uh, and uh, uh, I will also post in this community group, our daily market open bell video, which you can uh, also see on YouTube, on the YouTube channel. It's called uh, Kai Shi Qi Pao Xian uh, in Putonghua. So if you cannot, understand Cantonese, you can still uh, watch our open bell videos, daily open bell videos done by me in uh, Putonghua. Okay, uh, if you, you can read Chinese, uh, you can uh, join this uh, my, community, my community group and then uh, you can get update from market update uh, from, uh, on Hong Kong and China every day. Uh, and also I will, uh, if uh, if possible, uh, I will reply uh, questions in the community group. Uh, uh, can we show here? No, we cannot show. Can we show? We cannot show. Okay. Uh, it's quite instant. Sometimes if I, I do have the time, I will uh, reply like Q&A. Uh, you ask about a certain stock, then I will uh, try to give instant reply in this community group. Although now currently it's in Chinese, but you can you can ask in English. I can uh, reply in English. For English question, I reply in English. But the uh, posting of commentary, because uh, most Hong Kong users, uh, they, are, uh, uh, they, uh, they prefer to read Chinese. So it's uh, in Chinese. In future, if there's demand for English, uh, commentary, English analysis. I will also do that and post it in the same uh, community group. Okay. So, uh, and there's another one called IPO Da Xin Jiao Liu. There's about IPO subscription in Hong Kong. Uh, Hong Kong uh, has been, but last year uh, it, it, it has dropped to uh, the seventh position. But before, Hong Kong used to be top three in IPO uh, fundraising. So IPO still an important investment activity uh, in Hong Kong. So we have this community group uh, focusing on uh, new IPOs, uh, the strategies for new IPOs. Uh, if you would want to find out uh, whether uh, a certain newly listed companies are worth for uh, subscribing the IPO, uh, you can join this uh, uh, community track, uh, uh, community group uh, to find out the latest information. But do uh, join. Uh, just uh, 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 you can find these uh, community groups uh, from the community button uh, in in the uh, Poems Mobile Tree uh, 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 app, and then. Uh, you can join uh, the Hong Kong community groups to join minor so that you can uh, uh, have update from uh, daily update from our open uh, market market open bell as well as uh, the daily uh, latest daily update. So uh, I will end here and uh, uh, let's see I mean uh, move on to the fireside chat and Q and a. Yes, uh, thank you, Luis, for the interesting presentation and also uh, sharing on the uh, poems community. So uh, I think there was one question just very uh, uh, very briefly, right? If you are new to the poems community, uh, you want to join in, just you need know, to download the poems 3.0 app. And then thereafter, you can just click on the community button and then just join. There's no need for any uh, trading account yet, uh, even if you re register and join the app. The app itself is uh, free to register and join without the trading account. But of course, if you have a trading account, you can log into the trading account and can join the community as well from there. Okay, so let's move to the fireside chat and also the Q&A session. If you have any questions, do in the Q&A box. Uh. Right, so I think uh, one of the questions that was uh, actually upvoted, right, uh, is actually on the aspect of uh, AIA expectations. But I think there's some price drop for the 1299 Hong Kong. 
AIA. Mm. So any any uh concerns or any recommendation on this counter? Okay. Um in the past it benefits from uh mainland uh tourists coming to Hong Kong to uh buy insurance policies because a lot of these business are generated in Hong Kong but not from local Hong Kong in uh citizens but instead actually from uh Chinese to uh, mainland uh, tourists but this inflow seems to have uh, slowed down uh, recently and it also uh, uh result in a lower uh, new enterprise value uh, profit margin so uh the, the investment community seems to be uh, unhappy about the its latest uh, new in new enterprise value uh, profit margin uh, reported in uh, for 2023 and that cost uh, triggered the sell off uh, on 1299 1299 okay this is 1299 yeah so uh we we think uh, the fundamental has has uh, deteriorated, and we still not seen uh, an improvement yet. So, uh, investors may wait for the first half of results that will be out, uh, not until August this year. So, in the next few months, before the release of more uh, financial uh, uh, data. Uh, business performance, the share price will still be on a weak trend. Uh, it's not uh, uh, in early April, it uh, dropped to $50.15 and then rebounded. But after the rebound today, uh, it dropped below $50 and saw a new 52 week low. So it's still on a weak uh, trend. Okay. Uh, next one is actually, I think uh, you mentioned one of the bearish sector that you have is on the property side. But I think there's a few questions that actually uh, they are interested more if uh, whether it's a good time to invest into some of the property counters for passive uh, long-term income. I think more for the dividend income. So one of the counter that you refer to is a CK infrastructure, 1038. And another one is the link read. So any views on these two as a for long-term income of a prospects? Yeah, uh, CKI infrastructure, although it's uh, under the Cheong Kong uh, group of companies, uh, it's not uh, engaged in property uh, real estate development. It uh, focuses on infrastructure uh, and uh, over the years it has um, uh, moved its focus to uh, outside Hong Kong. Now it has a power network in the UK, uh, water supply, gas, natural gas supply in the UK. Uh, it also has environmental uh, protection business in Europe, in Holland and the New Zealand. Uh, so uh, we expect yeah, uh, it to be a resilient play, uh, and a stable uh income play. Over since its listing, uh, it boasts uh, uh that every year is able to increase its dividend payout. Since uh never for any one year it has uh not increased the dividend payout. So for investor looking for uh, uh dividend. Uh, return. So this is, I think, this is a good uh, uh company uh, worth investing in because first of all, uh, the business nature is very diversified, and it is very also very globalized. Uh, it's very stable and resilient. Uh, and then secondly, uh, it uh is uh, dividend payment record is good. Uh, increasing uh dividend payout every year. And I think now the dividend uh, yield uh, still 7%, let me see, uh, the latest, because its share price has corrected uh, a bit lately, as you can see from uh, the price chart. So uh, the dividend yield now is about 5.7%, uh, slightly better than the 10-year uh, US Treasury yields are uh, better. Uh, and... Uh, How can we uh, here? Yeah, I want to show a longer. 
trade. Um, its share price uh, uh, really very uh, rapidly in the fourth quarter of uh, 2023 on the hope of a US interest rate cut that will uh, uh, boost its attractiveness as a dividend play. But the def, uh, the, uh, as I explained earlier, uh, now uh, the US with it, they will uh, really cut interest rate in June, is still uncertain. Although we uh, still share the view that uh, the Fed, uh, Federal Reserve will uh, start cutting interest rates in June, but the market may think otherwise. There's uh, uh, divergent thinking in the market. So this caused the share price to uh, correct after the uh, rally uh, in the fourth quarter last year. So uh, actually it's a good uh, entry uh, opportunity for investors during when, uh, uh, to, uh, when its share price uh, corrects uh, after the rally last year. Uh, suggested entry ply, price would be uh, 44 dollars uh, 44 Hong Kong dollars and uh, first first target uh, if it's able to uh, see uh, to retest the year high of 4850 then you are uh, looking at 10 percent return uh, from 44 dollars uh, stop loss recommended stop loss at 42. All right. Uh, thank you for the view on the, the CTI. So another one is I think there was a stock pick uh, from you for JD. So uh, in relation, correlation, I think people are also interested uh, in the other big tech companies uh, like the Alibaba and also Meituan. So any views on uh, the these three, like any preference uh, or only JD is more uh, uh, suitable in terms of the diversification? Yeah. Yeah. Uh... Because on the e-commerce uh, arena, we think uh, over uh, JD is getting more competitive compared to Alibaba uh, in the battle with other e-commerce uh, players such as Pinduoduo uh, and uh, the new entrants such as uh, Douyin, uh, Kuaishou and Bilibili. And uh, the logistic part, uh, we think JD is also stronger than Alibaba. Uh, and Alibaba, some of the growth uh, new business did not uh, uh, perform very well, also drag on the share price. For instance, the cloud, uh, cloud service now uh, is losing market share to uh, China telco operators such as uh, China Mobile and uh, China Telecom. Okay, uh, but the share price, uh, I think uh, it will also, is, uh, it has bottomed out. Uh, uh, it's bottomed out around 64.60 in January uh, this year. But you can see the rebound from the January low was quite moderate. It has only uh, risen by only 10%. Am I right? $64 to save, uh, currently is 70 to 73, uh, around uh, 10%. Uh, but you, if you look at 9618, uh, JD.com, uh, the recovery is stronger. From 70, 80, uh, you take $79, uh, 78, uh, 50, it has risen to 108. So it's about $30 uh, rally from the January low that would uh, close to 30%, more than 20% rally. So uh, sometimes if you look at the relative price performance, it also tell which stock uh, fares better and why. We, 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 uh, my, my, my approach is uh, we look at the, the price performance to uh, differentiate or to identify the outperformer. And then uh, from the men fundamental side, we try to uh, find out what are the reasons the, uh, for the uh, outperformance. Uh, so uh, the reasons I think I have put forward already earlier uh, are views on JD.com. So uh, Alibaba, it will uh, gradually uh, uh, recover the share price, but on a slower pace, okay? Uh, we expect resistance around 76 to 77 Hong Kong dollars. Since you, you can see uh, the, uh, the uh, $77 uh, was seen 
uh, in early February. And since then, its share price was was on uh, still a weak uh, a weak note. Uh, uh, at most, it uh, the rally was up to seventy five. Uh, uh, still two dollars uh, shy of the February high. Okay, for three six nine zero, we may turn. Uh, the results uh, last year, I think, um, uh, was better than expected. Uh, uh, despite the uh, worry that uh, the opening up of the economy, people think uh, will dine out more and uh, order food delivery less. Uh, but uh, the two o two three financial results uh, show that uh, it turned out not so. Uh, actually, uh, people are ordering even more food deliveries, maybe because of uh, consum uh, consumption downgrade, 消费降级, uh, so people uh, save money uh, uh, having uh, eating home instead of uh, dining out. So that benefit uh, may turn. Uh, and the other business uh, the uh, related to traveling, uh, 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 air ticket and hotel uh, uh, booking also uh, rebounded very strongly for after the uh, opening up of uh, the economy, the post-pandemic uh, recovery is very strong. So you can see its share price has risen uh, by more than $40 from the uh, year low of 61. Uh, now is uh, 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 for the time being is um, uh, it meets resistance around the 250-day moving average. Currently lies at uh, close to 110, 109. But if it, I think over time, it, it will uh, break above uh, the 250-day moving average and uh, move continue to uh, move higher. Our target, uh, medium-term target for the company is 115, okay? All right, thank you. Uh... I think there's a lot of questions regarding the Ping An insurance and the Ping An company itself in view of also uh, any correlation to the Ping An trust issue. So maybe you can uh, share some views on regarding this aspect. Yes, that is. And that explains why its share price underperformed uh, the market. Actually, uh, life insurance, uh, share price of other life insurers such as uh, uh, China Life, uh, they all underperformed. Uh, because of poorer uh, investment uh, return uh, due to the uh, property market, equities market. Uh, so uh, the investment return uh, decreased. Uh, that's the uh, first thing. And the growth in new enterprise uh, value also slows down. Uh, so among Chinese insurers, we prefer the uh, property insurers such as 2328, uh, that, that benefit from 2328, what does it does not change? Uh, uh, mm -hmm. It benefit from, I mean, say for instance, car insurance, as more people buy uh, new uh, EV cars, EV. EV, the insurance rate, uh, the premium, is, uh, is reported that it's 50% higher than uh, few uh, uh, cars are uh, traditional. So uh, uh, we don't like life insurance companies because of uh, lower investment return and slower growth in new uh, policies uh, and pre premium uh, income. Uh, secondly, uh, Ping An, because of his exposure uh, to the property real estate, uh, market and uh, also Ping An Trust uh, issue you mentioned. So its share price uh, actually underperformed. Uh, uh, we, at the moment, if you ask me, we prefer uh, for Chinese financials, we prefer uh, banks to insurance companies. Okay. Among insurance companies, we prefer property and casualty insurance company to life insurers. Okay. Uh, so, Caixian, uh, China Caixian, uh, China, see casualty and property. And the other one also uh, is catching up is uh, Zhong An. Uh, you can see the share price is on an uptrend. Uh, this one is the largest online 
property casualty and property insurer in China. And its share price has dropped quite a lot uh, since its listing. So uh, if you ask me about our views on insurance companies, uh, our view is that we prefer banking, uh, the banking sector to insurance sector. And among uh, in life insurance and uh, casualty and property insurance, we prefer the latter. Okay. Uh, yeah. So I think uh going back to one thing that I think we missed out on is the uh for the local REITs performance versus maybe the banks uh any preference very bad in the two for dividend yeah uh the local REITs uh the biggest one would be uh the link REITs you can see in the share price uh it saw a new low again although in some people's uh uh view uh it's it looks attractive. Uh, when the share price goes down more, uh, the yield would be higher. The dividend uh, yield dividend ratio would be higher. Yet, uh, if if it continues to head south, then you will the loss in share price may not uh, make up for uh, the, your uh, dividend uh, income. Okay. Now, uh, at this uh, yes, it's eight point four percent yield. 8.4% yield. But uh, you may have heard about a uh, lot of close down of uh, Cha Chan Tang, uh, restaurants, shops in Hong Kong. So uh, even for Ling Ritz, which is viewed to be more uh, resilient because of its shopping malls are not those uh, uh, catered for tourists. Uh, they are more the, the neighborhood type of uh, uh, shopping malls. Yet, uh, even the neighborhood shopping malls are affected by the current Hong Kong uh, market sentiment that uh, there are more closed downs, uh, admittedly, more closed downs. Sad to see, uh, uh, but uh, uh, it's unavoidable uh, because uh, more Hong Kong people uh, 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 go to Sunshine, Greater Bay every weekend uh, and spend less time uh, and less money in Hong Kong. So uh, Ling Ritz also um, uh, uh, entered the, uh, pro uh, the office uh, property uh, part uh, uh, over the last few years. So he has uh, a new uh, office property in Kai Tech, which is over oversupply, as I mentioned just now, uh, even for grade A, uh, commercial properties in Hong Kong, the vacancy rate has gone up to 16%. So we expect more uh, rental downward uh, uh, adjustment uh, 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 in the next two, three years. And then uh, uh, the share price may, may underperform. Uh, uh, I think the downtrend is not ended yet. It's not ended yet, despite that it's offering more than 8% dividend yield. You may ask the question why, uh, even with the 8% dividend yield, is share price still uh, uh, see new lows? It's because of uh, uh, the expectation of lower uh, uh, earnings from the, uh, from the REITs. Okay, so, so another one is a uh, popular question is the difference or preference between the China bank, like local Hong Kong bank or the China, uh, the big four banks. Okay, um, I think we prefer the uh, international, uh, local Hong Kong banks with international exposure, such as Stan Chart. Okay, um. Uh, uh, the pure local Hong Kong banks are also catching up, such as Hang Seng, which is where you can see the share price, uh, because uh, uh, it, it has uh, announced a new repurchase program that uh, also lends support to the... and uh, the But the NPL ratio in Hong Kong will uh, certainly go up uh, in the near future. So we uh, prefer uh, Hong Kong banks with international exposure, namely Sanchart and uh, HSBC. HSBC also the share price, you can see uh, outperformed uh, the market. It's risen to as high as 65 Hong Kong dollars. But uh, now it's, uh, you see a correction uh, towards the 10-day 10, 10 moving average. So it would be a, uh, a correction would be a good entry 
uh, opportunity for investors who uh, like this, uh, these local banks with international exposure. Okay, I think uh, we have to wrap up because uh, time is almost up. But like uh, Louis has mentioned, so you can actually join the P3 community group uh, if you actually wish to actually uh, le learn more about the this uh, uh, questions that you ha might have to share with him. And then he can actually answer in English or in Chinese. All right. So I will share some slides. All right. Okay. Where you can actually take a look. Right, so this is uh, the QR code for the feedback form, and also you'll be receiving a copy of the slides if you do uh, send via the QR code. All right, I think you can see the slides, right? Uh, okay, uh, next one is this. Okay, so our next session will be for the Malaysia market where we'll for next Monday. Well, of course, we do have other sessions for Thailand, Indonesia coming up as well. Okay, so uh, I'd like to thank... Uh, everyone for joining us for the session just now we'll be uploading the recording on the affiliate capital facebook page and youtube so you can actually view the recording of the webinar on your own time as well so we also have other uh, interesting webinars going on almost every other day all right so you can see and join us uh, through uh, our education page on our home page itself if you wish to join the other webinar or seminars so do feel take your time to also fill the survey i will flash the qr code again so you can fill us a way to actually let us know how to improve the experience with us in the future. All right. Okay. You can also join our investing community groups, which I mentioned just now. It's either for Singapore one or even the Hong Kong investment groups, where Louis also share his opinions and ideas there. So once again, we thank you for joining us and we hope to see you uh, next week. All right. For the different sessions, we do have our flagship main event for Singapore strategy and stock pick on 20th of April, Saturday between 10 to 12 p.m. So that will be held at the River City Tower. Or if you cannot join on the physical site, you can actually join us online on webinar as well. All right. So thank you, everyone, for joining and have a nice day ahead.